He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so he kindly set the switch. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. Through the station they thundered, disaster lay ahead. Something sticky splashed all over James. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Bumping the cars fiercely, he jerked his driver off the footplate and followed them into the siding. Come back, yelled his driver. Those buffers don't look very safe to me. The last load poured down. Suddenly, Percy found that he couldn't stop. The buffers didn't stop him either. Oh, wailed Percy. Help! The buffers were broken, and Percy was wheel deep in coal. Go on, go on, they yelled, and bumped Percy's driver and fireman off the footplate. Oh, said Percy, that's enough. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. The van's breaking. The van was in pieces. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. The house rocked, broken glass tinkled, plaster was everywhere. She banged the door. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Beep! Beep! Look out! The brake van was in smithereens. Percy broke the cart to smithereens. Lime flew everywhere. Then came trouble. Thomas collected the tree safely, but large snowdrifts lay ahead. Porters didn't hear him either. Percy gave them such a fright that boxes and bags burst everywhere. More trouble lay ahead. Hissed Percy, the water is sloshing my fire. Just ahead was a stretch where the hot sun had bent the rails on the track. Careful, Thomas, called his driver, but it was too late. Diesel bumped the car so hard that the loads went everywhere. He banged the cars hard into the buffers. The buffers weren't secure. The silly cars were sunk. Danger lay ahead. Go faster, go faster. They pushed Thomas over the switches. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Stop, stop, cried Toby. The driver braked hard. Then there was trouble. At last, the cars grew tired. I'm winning, gasped Oliver. But it was too late. The line here crosses a narrow road, and there was Bulgy, wedged firmly under the bridge. But it was too late.
whenever they did anything the Duke thought wrong, he rode roughly and often came off the rails. But then suddenly... He's bumped us, screamed the coaches. Let's get back at him. They surged into Sir Handel and pushed him off the rail. Sir Handel was about to cause a great deal of trouble. Told you, but it was no use. Hurrah, hurrah, roared the cars. Peter Sam shut his eyes. He was stuck at the far end of the tunnel, and he was very cross. But it was too late. Sleepers and ballast, I'm off. Peter Sam was heading for trouble. There's something hanging from the roof, shouted his driver. Peter Sam came out of the tunnel a different looking engine. He no longer had his funnel. Then there was trouble. I'm coming apart! Just like this, he boasted. The painter couldn't see. Both he and the paint pot fell all over mm. Henry. Then there was trouble. But it was too late. Oh, no, cried Percy. Now there'll be trouble. And there was. Percy's driver quickly stopped the train. It was out of control and running aground straight into the sheds. called the engines from inside the shed. I can't! Called Cranky. Don't move! You're still attached to Cranky! But it was too late. And he was. He was overloaded with flour, came the reply, and he broke down. Stupid lorry was reversing and fell straight into the sea, said the tow truck man. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. As he sped along, he suddenly saw a large hole in the road. He braked hard, but it was too late. Bother! I'm hot! My engine will overheat! And it did. Bother! George was enjoying rolling along the lane, but not Sir Topham Hat. Oil splashed everywhere. He veered out of control, and Sir Topham Hat landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Bother! Bother! But it was too late. <laughs> Suddenly, he saw a freight car on the line ahead. Get out of my way! But the freight car wouldn't move until Gordon forced it. Then there was trouble again. Get out of here fast! The mine's collapsing! When disaster struck. Help! Henry braked hard, but the freight cars hit some of the rubble and plunged into the ravine. Trouble. Thomas was rudely interrupted. 
it was too late. But it was too late. And Oliver bumped the freight cars hard. Disaster lay ahead. Straight into a muddy pool. One snapped. Then it was too late. Suddenly, the engine lost control and plunged over the side into the swamps below. But it could. Except Percy. Later, Thomas had to help clear snow by a tunnel, but it was too deep, and he got stuck. The freight cars plunged into the ravine. Help! But it was too late. He went off the rails at Bulgy's Bridge and dropped the pipes onto the tracks instead of the trucks. I can't see a thing, said Thomas. And then, before he could even think of anything else, Bust my buffers, cried Thomas. But it was too late. Oh, no, he cried. Whoops, Jack sputtered. Thomas couldn't see. There was a huge rock buried under the snow. Suddenly, his snowplow hit the rock. Bouncing buffers, exclaimed Thomas. My plow is broken. His driver tried to stop, but the broken plow hit the water tower. Cinders and ashes, exclaimed Thomas. Stop! Luckily, no one was hurt. Donald was in a bad mood. Duck shouted, but it was too late. But the troublesome trucks delight in mischief. He was so scared, he lurched forward and rammed the freight car. Naughty gnomes, cried Percy. He steamed away faster than before. He bumped into the coal cars, and the coal cars bumped into Percy. Percy was pushed onto the loading ramp. Help, cried Percy. Percy was hoisted up. tipped over and brought back down again. We're out of hot air! Ah! cried James. What's happening? Crash, bang, wallop with the balloon and landed right on top of James. The branch line couldn't take his weight. Oh, help! Gordon cried as he slid off the tracks and into a field. No one was
was hurt. Oh no, hooted Percy. Yuck, he groaned. I've never been this dirty. A mouse! Alicia Body screamed. Shut up! She screamed so loud and so long that windows broke all over town. Definitely a coloratura, said Gordon. Duncan plummeted down the incline. Bow! He yelled. Suddenly, there was a deep rumbling sound. Thomas's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. We're stuck. His driver jumped to safety as the rocks began to fall. But Fergus was covered in rocks right up to his funnel. He didn't see the broken rail until it was too late. He dangled dangerously above the water. Suddenly, the crane swung the boiler and knocked Edward right off the track. Arthur's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Squashed fruit flew everywhere. Yeah, there he is! Now that could have been a little smoother. Oliver felt awful, but there was trouble ahead. Some faulty points sent his freight cars one way and Thomas onto the old pier rail. Whoa! The troublesome trucks were delighted. Duncan's driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. The statue flew through the air and landed in the lake. He was going as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough. The apples were all smashed. Elizabeth slid out of control into a deep snowdrift. Poor Elizabeth. There was a big bump in the track. His driver looked out. The old wooden bridge was starting to collapse. Help! Don't use the old wooden bridge, said Rusty. It's dangerous. Thomas bumped straight into Percy, and the bunting flew up into the air. Bertie skidded all over the road. Percy! Trevor was so surprised his trailer bumped into a pile of logs. A log fell and rolled down the hill. Snow stuck to the log. It turned into a snowball. Oh no! cried Percy. Oh no! Luckily, no one was hurt. The next day, Henry had to collect the dining car. But he shunted the dining car so hard, everything flew into the air. There were more complaints than ever. A mighty biff. The coaches rolled along the line and bumped into James. And soon it was. The troublesome trucks hurtled into a siding. They biffed and bashed the buffers. The pipe slipped and fell all over the track, but Percy puffed on. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. Then, this made Emily very cross. 
and she bit them very hard. Oh no! They cried, and they splashed into the duck pond. Emily was covered in a flowery mess. Everyone watched as he puffed into a big pile of snow. Suddenly, he bumped into a freight car. The freight car rolled into a lever, and then there was a whooshing sound. Oh no, James puffed. Coal poured out everywhere. The eggs started to bounce in their boxes. Then Thomas changed lines. It caused a big bump. The eggs were breaking. You have broken my egg. Thomas braked as hard as he could. But the freight cars of fish were too heavy. Oops, said Thomas. Sorry. He's so hard. The coupling broke. Thomas shot forward. Cocoa powder flew everywhere. And then there was trouble. Thomas hit the telegraph pole. And they all came off the tracks. Cinders and ashes. Mighty pushed Mac as hard as he could. And the coach crashed into the rocks. First, one rock fell. Then another rock. Soon, lots of rocks came tumbling down. The track was blocked, and he didn't see the goods train ahead until it was too late. Luckily, no one was hurt. Neville saw a barrier on the track. He slammed on his brakes. But it was too late. Neville was in terrible trouble. But suddenly, there was a terrible noise. As the dust cleared, Emily saw what had happened. Then there was another loud crash. It was Toby. He bit the car very hard. And the door came loose. Then there was trouble. His pistons popped and his traction rods rattled. Inside the passenger car, the picnic camper burst open, and the narrow gauge controller and Mrs. Percival were juddered and shuddered. But it was too late. The flatbed bumped into the air. The bell tumbled off the flatbed and rolled down the hill. Clang, clang, boing, went the bell as it fell and fell. He heard the flatbed crash into the buffers and then splash into the canal. Then there was trouble. Reneus raced right off the track. Oh no! cried Scarlowy. and biffed into the buffers. Sticky taffy splattered everywhere. Edward screeched to a stop, but the sides of the freight cars collapsed. Steel pipes toppled all over the tracks. Bust my buffers! Gordon hit the pipes with a loud crunch. He came off the tracks. Clang! Scarlowy jumped. His freight cars hit the buffers, and bright white flour flew everywhere. Then there was trouble. Logs broke free at the forest mill. They rumbled and tumbled down the hill. The log hit Scarloe with a great big boof. Scarloe was dented, and the bull roared. Thomas heard scratching and scraping sounds. When Thomas saw what had happened, he could not believe his eyes. Earth and stones tumbled down the bank and blocked Thomas's track. Cinders and ashes! Thomas was up to his buffers in mud and stones. He tried to push on, but he couldn't. He tried to back out, 
but he couldn't. Thomas was stuck. James applied his brakes and screeched to a halt, but Edward couldn't stop in time. Sorry. The coupling came loose, and Scarloey rolled backwards. Help! cried Scarloey, but it was too late. Scarloey's flatbed biffed into the sidings and came off the track. Thomas sent Hector rolling backwards into a set of buffers. Hector crashed off the track. And he biffed right into his lucky trucks. He bashed into the barrier. And the light bulb broke. Reneus was surprised. He jumped and biffed into his flatbeds. Rusty jumped and he biffed his freight cars. Rusty was covered in red brick dust. Her handle biffed his freight cars in surprise. Flower flew up into the air like a great white cloud. Peter Sam shot forward. He bashed his flatbed so hard they burst through the buffers, smashed through the oil drums stacked on the wharf and splashed into the canal. ...his wagons under the hopper. But he didn't see Percy there, and he biffed him. Right under the hopper. Percy was covered in coal from funnel to footplate. But it was too late. Edward rattled around the bend and straight into a barrier. Parcels flew everywhere. But it was too late. Toby splashed through the puddle. Henrietta was covered from bumper to buffer in dark brown mud. Suddenly, she saw the runaway car racing towards her. Then there was trouble. Thomas bumped into Bert, and the stinky cheese shot into the air and splattered down all over Thomas, Bert, and Ari. Now we're really stinky, moaned Ari. And spin around and around, they crashed through a snowbank. Bust me boiler, cried Duncan. The bicycle toppled off the flatbed and crashed to the ground. All the bells jingled and jangled. Then there was trouble. There was a cow on the line. Thomas turned quickly into a siding just in time. He hit the buffers and the billboard flew into the lake. But just then, Diesel oiled round the bend. Diesel was surprised to see all the engines. He screeched to a halt. Rolls of bunting went everywhere. Because the coconut car was rolling towards the level crossing. It smashed against the gate. Coconuts rolled everywhere. Stepney was covered in pink sugar from funnel to footplate. It smashed into Emily. Peter Sam smashed into a buffer. The cream churns crashed. The junction was blocked. Bubbling boilers. The water tower crashed to the ground. Thomas bashed straight into Diesel. Stone poured down from the hopper and fifth into Mavis, who came off the rails. Oh, rattling rods. Then there was trouble. With a crash and a bang, Thomas and Diesel smashed Ari and Bert right through the back of the engine sheds. Stones and timber flew everywhere. Bust my buffers. Gordon bit straight into them. The logs started to roll down the hill. Bust my buffers. The bump in the track. Some of the special blocks bounced off his flat. And he hit the buffers with a big bump. More of the special blocks bounced off his flatbed. A clang and a crash. Thomas clanked off the rails. His flatbed bashed his buffers with a bump. The last of the special blocks fell from his flatbed into the water. Scarloey crashed into Duncan's cars. 
Bunting flew into the air. It fell all over Scarloey. Scarloey bashed into Rusty's cars. Ice cream flew into the air and spattered all over the engines. Scarloey bashed through the buffers. And with a splash, a sploosh, and a splosh, Scarloey plunged into Percival Pond. 